to do more for the world than the world does for you, that is success. Henry Ford. Hi, my name is Bob and welcome back to the homestead, y'all. If you want to learn more about homesteading, living off grid with wind and solar, organic gardening, preserving your own food, raising fowl, raising livestock, then click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you'll be notified when we post new videos. In this video, this is going to be part one of our solar installation for the barn. Now this is just for the lighting system. It's going to be its own independent solar system. I've, we've mounted two solar panels on the, on the lean-to, put a control box in, a combiner box, has the charge controller in it, and then we've ran conduit and a switch and wiring for the lighting. Now in this part, you're going to see the conduit, how we ran the conduit for it, how we put the installation boxes, the pull box, the light switch box, and we mount the enclosure. On part two, you'll see us wiring up the enclosure, wiring up the charge controller, the breakers, and wiring, mounting and wiring up the solar panels. I'll put that link in the description below. So if you enjoy this video, please click like. And don't forget to watch part two, and thanks for watching.
done. So this one's just a straight 10 foot pull. Didn't get my fish tape out. I just used my small fiberglass rod. You can see my rod sticking out. My string. So I ran my string through the conduit to the other side. Now what I'll do is untie that string and pull the fiberglass rod back out. Then I'll tie my wire to it and pull it back. I'm working on the solar lights for the barn and I have to pull my red and black wires from light fixture to light fixture. It's 10 feet in between my trusses. I have a light fixture on every truss. So I need about 12 feet of wire for each pool. So what I'm gonna do is I have my wire on my spool pullers and I've made a mark at 12 feet in the floor. So I'm gonna pull this five times and cut it off and that'll give me 12 feet of wire so that way I can run it through my conduit for each one. And then I'll start wiring up the fixtures. After I get that done, then I'll go back on this end and I'll pull my wire down to my switch and then pull my wire back to my combiner box where I have the solar panels mounted outside. And they come into a breaker and I'll hook these wires to a breaker. Now I'm using 10 gauge wire on this. Uh, actually, after I did the math, I could get by with 14 gauge wire uh, with a 2% voltage drop but I'd rather not have any voltage drop going to the far light in the barn here, so I'm gonna use 10 gauge wire on that. Remember, anytime you're pulling a DC load, always check your amperage and see how much your load amperage is, and then find a chart and see what the voltage drop is, so that way you know what, what size wire to use. There's tons of charts out there on the internet that you can look up. Um, I use one on Arizona Wind and Solar's website. I downloaded it several years ago. I have a book that has it in it also. Uh, I think I have it, Ugly's book that has it in it, an electrician book. But I always just look at it on the internet or I've got the PDF downloaded with the chart also so I can pull it up on my phone. But always check the charts, that way you don't get too much voltage drop because remember DC voltage, the further you pull it, the bigger the wire you have to have. It's not like AC. Um, AC with alternating current, you can go long distances and not have any voltage drop. You don't have to use as big a wire, but when you're doing dealing with DC voltage, you always have to increase the wire size depending on how far you're going. But anyhow, I'm gonna pull this five times and cut it off and get this wire run, get my receptacles wired up, and I'll show you how to wire those up also. And then hopefully get the switch wired up today and maybe even pulled to the combiner box over there. So maybe tomorrow I'll be able to finish this project up and I'll have lights in the barn finally so I can do some work out here at nighttime. I've been doing work with a little portable light and my headlamp and that's getting old. So hopefully I can get this done today, get that far anyhow and finish wiring it up tomorrow and we'll have lights in the barn. All right, and there we go. You can see on this end, I have about a foot sticking out. And then the other end, there's about a foot sticking out. So, now I have to do that four more times, and then I'll be good. After breaking the tip off my fiberglass rod, my pull rod, and then breaking the fiberglass pull rod, it occurred to me that as cold as it is today, and as stiff as this wire is, it being 10 gauge that I might be able to just tape the end of it and push it through the conduit. And lo and behold, it worked great. 
Um, so I'm glad my tip broke. I'll show you the tip of the conduit and you can see the red tape on it. So I was able to just put tape the end of it. I don't know if you can see, but it's right there. And it pushed right through the conduit and with the natural curve of the wire, when it got to the other end, it pushed out the box. So I can take you over to this pull box and show you over here. And you can see the end of the wire sticking out with the tape. Well, if I can get it to focus. Okay. So you can see where it came out. So it came out of my pull box right here. That's the end of the wire. So now what I have to do, is I have to go back in this pull box and pull another wire over and then down to my switch. So that'll be my next pull. Time to wire up my receptacle for our DC lighting here in the barn. I'm gonna use just a regular ceramic light bulb um, receptacle. But first I need to cut these off and put some ends on them. I like to use these ends. <laughs> I like to use these ends because it makes it a lot easier to wire it up to the receptacle. But you don't have to, you can just strip the wires off and wrap the copper wire around it and tighten it up good. Um, but I like to use the little ends on them. So I'm gonna cut these off and crimp some ends on them real quick. So I like to just leave about four inches of wire. So I'll just cut the rest of that off and then strip both these ends. Now this is the last light in the barn. So I only have two wires to do, but on the rest of these, I'll have four wires that I have to do. So the two positive and two negative will have to go in the receptacle. So that's why the ends make it a lot easier than trying to get two wires under there, um, trying to twist them together and get them under the screw and get them good and tight. put these ends on it's fairly easy just strip about a quarter inch or so of wire and slide them all the way in then take your crimpers get it all the way in I like to crimp them one way turn the crimpers over move over just a little bit and crimp them again and that generally gets a good tight crimp so we'll get the negative one on here. We'll crimp him. Turn it over, move it over a little bit. And crimp it again. Good with both of those. Now on the back of your receptacle, you have a gold and a silver. I always put the positive, the power on the gold. So we'll hook him up to the gold. Little girl. And then we'll hook the negative up to the silver. Yeah. 
All right, I always pull on them a little bit to check it. Make sure your wire goes back up in there well. Slide it on your screws and then tighten your screws up. That's all there is to it. Now let's do the other five or four and we'll be done. 